Hey folks, I'm Jack Fawcett, and welcome to this demo and review of the One Control BJFE Dyna Red Distortion 4K. So, I have some experience with this pedal from the past. This was one of the early Bjorn designs. It was the first distortion pedal he ever designed, the original Dyna Red Distortion, which I have played other iterations of, and I always loved that pedal. It was, it just got the sound. You know, when you're thinking about distortion, specifically like 70s, 80s rock distortion, there's a sound that you picture in your head. That sound isn't always easily attainable, but we all kind of hear it and there's a lot of things that get close and, and very few things really, really nail it. Well, one of the things that I loved about the Dyna Red was that it really nailed it. Now, what's especially different from this one, other than the fact that just it's being done through one control and the quality and the, you know, the kind of craftsmanship of one control pedals are exceptional. They're very sleek. They're very easy to dial in. They're super high quality. Aside from it being done, this circuit being done through one control, there is an added 4K knob, which is the presence knob. So you still have your drive volume and treble, and now you have this extra presence knob. And basically it just makes it much more versatile to be able to use with different rigs, with different guitars and different amplifiers and really tailor the sound to different rigs. It has all the charm and the character of the original Dyna Red Distortion, which was one of my favorite distortion pedals. And when I mentioned the sound that you picture in your head, the Dyna Red was one of the pedals that got the sound for me, where I thought, you know, if I need a nice distortion sound, like a 70s or 80s distortion sound, that's the one I'm gonna go to because that's the one that I know is gonna get me that sound without needing to fuss. This one just takes it a step further with making it a little bit more versatile and trying to fit different rigs. Now I will mention, this is per the website, 
this is op amp based and can run all the way down to five volts, which kind of gives it the dying battery feel. And the reason I mention this is because they say right on the website that if you have a variable power supply, you can turn the voltage down and get some really kind of cool different dynamic tones out of it. I don't really know what a lot of that stuff means, but Bjorn having spoken with him before, I mean, we've never actually spoken. It's been, you know, sp speaking, but that's speaking nowadays, I feel like, which is kind of a sad commentary on humanity. I digress. Having interacted with Bjorn before, I know that his attention to detail is absolutely impeccable. And these types of little details are something that is kind of puts a lot of thought and care into in designing this pedal. It's down to that attention to detail uh, that these circuits are crafted. So it's worth knowing about it's even though it comes straight from the website and I'm trying to just give you my opinion on the pedal, it's worth mentioning. For this demo, I'm plugging into a Supra Royal Reverb and I'm using two Music Man guitars. The first guitar that you heard it with was a Music Man Mariposa. And now next we're gonna play it with single coils on this guitar, which is an Ernie Ball Music Man Cutlass. This is a brand new finish they just came out with called Maroon Mist. Plugging this guitar again straight into the Supra Royal Reverb. I have nothing else in my chain, just the guitar into the pedal, into the amp. It, it, it just gets the sound. That's the, you know, again, it, whether or not this type of distortion is for you. If you were looking for that, you know, particularly like mid to late 70s, hard rock sound getting into what would later become kind of like hairband music. Think like Aerosmith in the early days and, and that kind of sound, that kind of a cranked 70s rocker amp sound. This is the pedal that I think really nails that sound. Out of all the pedals I've tried, I think this one would probably be my favorite for getting that sound. And I love the added fourth knob. I'm not really much of a tweaker. I like to just set it and forget it for the most part but it helps. They're not daunting. And one of the other things that I generally have liked about a lot of Bjorn's designs is the extremes of the knobs are very, very useful. There's a lot of pedals where, you know, even though the you have a whole knob, really maybe like this is about the amount of spectrum, usable spectrum you have on it, right? You know, some pedals get a little bit more. Bjorn designs his pedals very thoughtfully in a way where you know, you can crank them either way and have a usable sound. Now, it might not be a sound that you always use, but it's not like unusable and it could suit a rig that has maybe some kind of extreme, like if you have a really, really bright rig or if you have a really, really kind of muddy sounding rig, utilize the extremes on these pedals. Don't be afraid to turn knobs all the way up or all the way back, which you might not do on other pedals. But on these pedals, you can because they're done in a way where the extremes are usable and not overly harsh or overly dull or, or anything. Let me know what you think of this pedal. Let us know in the comments. Have you used the Dynared Distortion before? Have you tried out the new 4K? Let us know. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Check out the One Control Dynared Distortion 4K. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.